sprawl is reality for two out of three of us who live here in Europe. I'm Maitre Sita Roman and this week we are in Valencia, Spain to see how as we move to these urban economic powerhouses for jobs and opportunities, we also have to deal with critical issues like economic hardship, housing, transport, pollution. And that's forcing cities, mega size, big or small, to really start thinking about how they can become smart cities. Around 80% of Europe's energy is used by us as city dwellers, but we do contribute around 85% of the continent's GDP. Now, as the world's urban population is also set to double by 2050, it might be a good idea for us to understand what a smart city is. Every day we connect life's dots to wake up, to go to work, socialize and sleep. Smart cities connect the dots as well, between humans, society, information and communication technology. Connections that know when your next bus will come, controlling the traffic to decrease congestion, finding you a parking space, sensors that light street lamps, call emergency services or warn about pollution levels in real time. Smart cities take all the elements of urban life, creating a technological platform that allows citizens, businesses and governments to communicate and work together. Smart cities have until recently been large ones like Barcelona or Amsterdam, but smaller cities are catching up, piloting or planning to implement smart city strategies. Leading the way in Europe with the largest number of these smart cities are the UK, Spain and Italy. Europe's put urban development at the heart of its 2020 plan and a significant chunk of its regional development fund is now earmarked for smart cities. It can be mixed and matched, of course, with other structural funds by city and national governments. The logic, well, it's quite simple, that smaller cities after the crisis are going to have a tough time raising the cheap funding they need to do the infrastructure transformation a smart city requires. Municipal budgets have been cut and debt levels tend to be quite high. So Fanny Gore set out to see how Valencia is doing as it starts up its smart transformation. Inspired by Europe's large smart cities, Valencia began its transformation in 2012. I'm heading to the center of urban innovation to find out how far they've come. Hi Rafa, how do I meet you? You can take the bus 5, look on App Valencia for the closest station. Tools like App Valencia allow locals to get real-time information on buses and bikes, alerts about the city and even pay bills online. This is integrated into the Smart City Management Platform, which is a first in Spain. It is a horizontal platform in the way that it integrates the information collated from all services and also the external information generated by companies. The citizens are able to use the data. The private sector in general can develop apps, solutions that the city can benefit from because it gives us a solution for a service, but also it is a viable business model that will allow them to generate profitability. Valencia has budgeted over 1 billion euros for its transformation. More than half of that amount will be contributed by the European Structural and Investment Funds. An example of how the change will help Valencia's residents is the Traffic Management Control Centre. Basically, we have real-time control of what is happening in the principal avenues of the city. The control of traffic lights. We can change the frequency to facilitate emergencies, for example, or avoid traffic jams. The system reduces pollution and can lower costs for utilities. So, it's getting another 6 million euros from the Spanish government and the EU. Companies such as Telefonica are helping it happen. In the business world, we have dedicated to themes around the Internet of Things and, amongst them, smart cities. We have in our pocket a sensor that gives a lot of information. It is said that by 2020, millions of things will be connected. Our smart city strategy has allowed us to learn a lot about the resources we have in the city. Parking spaces, street lamps, rubbish skips. They're in place, but now we need them to speak to us and they'll communicate over the internet, allowing us to manage more efficiently. 
It's now up to Valencia to communicate and interact with the citizens, universities and companies to fully develop its strategy. Because that smart digitalization is critical to our booming urban population growth. As Fanny points out, a coherent strategy and building trust among citizens is imperative for a successful smart city. In a region like Valencia, that job falls on Chimo Puch. He is the president of the Valencian government. How are you building trust for a smart vision for Valencia and what is that vision? We came from a situation of mistrust in the public sector fundamentally because of problems from the past. It's still difficult, but progressively results support the process and gradually there are more citizens, more companies that trust in this system of innovation that affects all of us and that most certainly is led by the public sector together with the private sector. What is the state of Valencia's economy and how are you going to use technology to build on the strengths and curtail the weaknesses? La economía valenciana ha crecido el 3,9% el último año. The Valencian economy has grown 3.9% in the last year. Valencian companies and workers are overcoming great challenges. We have a problem in adapting education to new companies, and this is a fundamental element. We also have an issue with language skills. We have a problem with everything related to the incorporation of education into an innovative society. For example, the Valencian community will be the first in Spain to be connected online. This is a fundamental element to finally bringing all citizens, all families, all companies together in a real information society. How hard has it been for you to raise the money that you need from the capital markets or have you had to turn to grants and funding? And in some ways, do you think that sets some kind of precedent or example for other cities who are trying the strategy around Europe? We have to combine funds, private funds like banks, companies, and there's also the non-profit sector. There are diverse possibilities of capital contribution from the private sector, but of course we need European funds. We also need our own funds. It's a process. We have the same problems as other different European regions. It's evidence that there are more advanced regions and less advanced ones. In the end, this is about Europe having a project in favour of all European regions facing this fundamental challenge, which is an information society, a communication society. Mr. Pooch, on that note, thank you for your time and thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.